Hello folks, welcome back from Parts Unknown, the one, the only, Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about some AEW because there was supposed to be this most amazing hardcore false count anywhere, no audience member needed match. I don't know what show they were talking about. Let's talk about the rest of AEW because the rest of AEW is pretty good. So with AEW, very typically this year, a lot of people were watching AEW. They wanted to see this amazing match. Uh, it really didn't pan out. Were, wait, were there any good matches this week? Cheeseburger. Oh, there was one. Oh, wow. That's not good, folks. Let's see here. Let's start off with Heaver Games. Thank you very much for watching. Oh, no, wait. Which video did you watch? Oh, no, you made a comment on my Impact live stream, which I think I'm still allowed to do. I just have to be very careful about my creative content. Thank you, sir. You've earned that six count. Sean Strife, you are a master of the air guitar.
Etherpunk, you're rocking out to your briefcase boombox. Who is this, Mark? You, sir, can crawl right out of here. Orange Kraken, you sir always win my dirty pen. Anyway, just because this is a little more fitting. Generico's fave orphan. You, sir, are, oh, El Generico's fave orphan. You are a member of the El Generico band. Then Broken Warrior, you sir know that Jordan has back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Again, if you've interacted with me somehow, either by comments, um, remember I do do my live stream reaction show, only reaction show on Impact Wrestling on Tuesdays. Everything else is kind of taped because I don't even want to mess with the big companies. No. Thursday, tomorrow, depending on the weather, I might put out a special video that night. I have to see, because actually, for some reason, I have a lot to do to have to stay home order. I don't know. I have to go to the bank. I gotta get stuff notarized. I have to get fingerprinted. I might have a government job soon. That'll be, that'll be interesting. Uh, let's see here. So let's start with some AEW. AEW, AEW. And wow. This is going to be a long no audience show if this continues. Because this was actually the best match of the night, I think. It was Colt Cabana taking on Lance, Ar Lance Archer. And that was pretty cool. Because Lance Archer came out. They had like their little like wrestlers on like the side. For one time, there was only like one heel, and then all the other faces were on the other side. And I don't know who it was. Leo Sarcher just like knocked someone cold. I didn't even know who that was. Uh, of course, Chris Jericho is back on commentary. Chris Jericho should always be on commentary. Uh, he was hoping he he knocked out um, Pineapple Pete, who we'll actually see later in this match as Shug D. So we'll get to that later. But he just like knocked out some cold. <laughs> that was awesome. That guy felt like a sack of potatoes. And then like not even to begin the match, Archer then just knocked down Colt Cabana to like a forearm to the face. Whoa, this is oh, did I mention it was Colt Cabana? Boom boom. Colt Cabana taking on the murder hawk. Lance Archer. That's kind of okay, I guess. Um, so this was fun. So Lance Archer came out, he knocked out some, 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 some plants in the crowd. Then he came in the ring and decided to knock out Colt Cabana too. Whoa, so this starts off pretty quick. This was actually really fun. Um, for a while I didn't know who was going to win. There was a little Colt Cabana promo before this. And Chris Jericho even mentioned Colt Cabana's podcast. 
Indeed. Oh, wow, this is coming back. Coming back a lot quicker than I... Yeah, one week. Indeed. Yeah, if you didn't see me, like, last Friday, I was, like, completely shaved. Now, this is, like, where I normally am. So I haven't touched a razor in, like, not even a week. And I'm still, like, super scruffy. That's okay. Um, Seriously, so. though. Then Sarcher, they finally ring the bell. He's in the ring. Colt goes out of the ring. Then they switch positions. Archer goes out the ring. Colt goes in. Colt Caban is playing those mind games. Then it's Archer. Um, uh, Colt then, very classic arm ringers. Definitely doing the stuff Colt Caban is known for, even going back to his days with Chikara, uh, pro wrestling gorilla. Still very comedic like. Again, Colt Cabana and Yano. Match of the year. Always. Unless it's Yano versus Orange Cassidy. Ooh. A three-way threat. Colt Cabana versus Orange Cassidy versus Yano. Match of the year. That just did not stop. Goofness. Don't even have a word for it besides that. Uh, so after Cole was doing his arm ringers, he eventually got caught into a full Nelson slam. And it was like, was, they said, Larry, I, this looked like the old-fashioned clothesline from hell. And Lance Archer somehow hit a standing twisted bliss. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Cole, he never got out of the way of that. He did, uh, he, then then uh, Colt eventually has his little comeback. Elbow strike! Whoa! Oh! Elbow strike, flying head scissors, hip attack, and the double jump splash. So he jumps on the ground, then then he jumps on to his opponent. Double jump splash. That's pretty cool. Archer then pounced him, which even Chris Jericho got right and choke slam. Yeah, that was it. That was it. Uh, Archer then hit the blacken, whatever it's called. It's like the reverse. Ra flippy Razor's Edge. Lance Archer wins. He goes on to the tournament. Actually, I thought this was a really good match. There was good action from both. Good ring psychology. Colt Caban is just a joy to watch. Uh, this was a good surf and turf match. And I think one thing that, that, that made this match is that they had the audience so it sounded like a PWG crowd where it was loud but not deafening loud and had that poor sound quality. Unless you go to a PWG match or like a Chikara match or, or an old school ECW match, you kind of won't know what I'm talking about. If all you've gone to are like ECW and NXT matches, it's volume-wise it's not that much, but they do chant more, but they're more actively involved. So that's what I mean by a P PWG-ish crowd. Even though it's mainly the guns who are Austin Guns like professional fan number like three, I think. Next to Straw Hat Guy and um, Skinny Jesus Guy from ECW. But then Britt Baker, she was in her doctor's office. I wonder, yeah, because Georgia's not that far away from where she, she practices, actually. Indeed. So she had a deviated septum, which means she like cracked her nose, but didn't like break it because there's a cartilage in the nose and that will bend and move places. And then it's really easy to fix. You don't have to go up there with a mallet and stuff. Cause I think I saw there was some plastic surgery show. I forget what the proper names of them were. It just looked like a hammer and a chisel. The doctor stuck the chisel in the nose and then began to tap it with a hammer. There's a more proper medical term that eludes me right now. It just looks like a hammer and chisel, though. Because the same thing. Bonk. And then Taz was talking about his predictions. So th throughout the whole show, there was a whole bunch of people giving predictions. Some people in MMA world, a couple of comedians, a couple other wrestlers. Uh, it was okay. Taz was the only one I cared about. Then our next match, we had Cassandra Golden taking on Britt Baker. Uh, Britt obviously learned something from Adam Cole, baby! 
Because she learned how to do a super kick the right way for a change. And then she did that teeth, ro teeth rope stomp. And that was it for Cassandra Golden. Thank you. Collect your paycheck. New Britt Baker. Once it was Cassandra Golden, I'm like, she's not winning. Nope. Collect your paycheck. Head out the door, please. It was what you expected. It was good, though, to see Britt Baker come back a little bit. Made her look a little bit stronger. This was a good... It was okay. It was a ham sandwich of a match. I wonder. Adam Cole's in NXT. And one of the top people in NXT, by the way. I wonder if he would have any sway saying, hey, listen, my girlfriend's a wrestler with this other league. She can come in here. It's good with me. I wonder if he has any sway about that. Who knows? Then there was the bubbly bunch, da, 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 the bubbly bunch, da, da, da. this is the way they became the bubbly bunch. Um, really just <laughs> members of the inner circle, Hernandez, Ortiz, um, oh, Santana and Ortiz, I'm sorry. Santana, Ortiz, Sammy Guevara, and Chris Jericho were like Facebook and like video chatting and Facebook messaging like live each other. That was kind of fun. Jake Hader was there. He's just like chilling at the pool. It's like, kids, cover your ears. Daddy's going to say something bad. And then both kids like literally put their hands over the ears. And then, of course, Jake says, I'm going to I'm gonna beat the shit out of you. And like you just have this like look of these kids. You're like, Hoo? that was That was fun. That was actually kind of cute. That was funny, though. So that was a pretty good, decent segment. Then they had Suge D versus Sammy Guevara. Yeah, the Suge D starts doing the Suge train. Yeah, Sammy Guevara was having none of it. For the most part, Sammy Guevara just looked annoyed. He's like, what's this garbage? Uh, it was classic, uh, classic standing wrestling match. Kind of nothing that uh, fancy. Sammy Guevara did have a pretty good vertical suplex. Um, Shuggy, he got in a little offense. Sammy got in most of it. Again, Sammy's a superstar. He did the... What is it? Oh, he did the squatting Samoan drop. That was pretty neat. And Sammy hit... He, yes, yeah, she actually, yeah, she has, she has a pretty good-looking GTS. He hit that on, on Shuggy. That was it. Lights up. A ham sandwich of a match. And Kip Sabian versus Chuck E.T. of the best friends. And in Kip Sabian's corner, the ever voluptuous, I want to know if those are real, Penelope Ford. And in Chuck Taylor's corner, freshly squeezed Orange Cassidy. That, that, you just knew something was going to happen between Penelope Ford and Orange Cassidy, and well, it did. Um, for the most part, it was a good technical counter and counter counter versus counter match, an excellent chain wrestling throughout the match. Uh, Chuck Taylor is so good; he's surprisingly quick. And then I guess because he's his fellow countryman stuck in America because of coronavirus, uh, Jimmy Havoc was there too. I still think he should be even in kayfabe the brother of Jessica Havoc, but that's okay. Uh, Chuck Taylor he has some chops. Woo! Make the Nature Boy proud. Uh, let's see here. Chuck T. Actually, for the most part, seems faster than Kip Sabian. I mean, <laughs> Kip Sabian kind of posed with Chuck T when he got him down in the corner. That was, that was funny. Penelope eventually gets her shots in. But then uh, Chuck Taylor has a Michinoku driver, which is pretty good for just a two sweet count. Uh, Chuck. Then, uh, it was really weak. He, I think it was Chuck that did the really weak eight defeat. That looked absolutely terrible. Like, the foot was, like, by his arm, and he, like, fell, and you can see how the foot slid off. Ugh. Kip Sabian, not so much better. He did a not-so-GTS. Not and he does have that slingshot suplex, which is pretty cool, though. And then Ford came up in the ring distracted. And it distract me, too. If Penelope Ford was over there, and I just see in the corner of my eye a woman take take her, her jacket off, 
and reveal this amazing brassiere. I'd be like, what? So I don't blame Chuck Taylor for getting distracted. But then, of course, he got out of the way. And then Kip Sabian was there. He kissed uh, Penelope Ford. She came down. Orange Cassidy got up. Took his jacket. Kip Sabian was not, however, distracted. Then Jimmy Havoc said, enough of this nonsense. He, he just kind of comes out, does his, like, rampage DDT onto Orange Cassidy on the mats on the outside. Looks like he killed poor Orange Cassidy. Uh, while this is going on, there's a little bit of a wrestling match. Orange Cassidy goes kind of limps back to his corner. Uh, Kip Sabian does a good, good job of distracting the referee. Penelope before he goes up top. Hits a flying head scissor takedown from the top rope onto Chuck Taylor. Kip Sabian rolls up Chuck Taylor. Kip Sabian gets the win with an assist, of course, from the ever voluptuous. I want to know if those are really real. Penelope Ford. And I'll tell you what, it wasn't bad. I told a story. It's a cheeseburger match. Then we had Justin Law taking on Sean Spears. Yeah, you knew that. You know what was going to happen during this match. Uh, I'm only sure it was good though. Uh, Chris Jericho does mention ch jobbing. Oh, Chris Jericho exposing the business. One Jim Cornette's not going to be happy with you. Uh, Sean Spears, he doesn't even bother taking his shirt off. It's a fast snapmare by Spears. I don't know when Sean Spears got so quick, but Justin Law did not seem that fast. Justin Law, however, did get an arm wrench. And that was it. Very quickly. He, he even got a little roll-up attempt in. Because then they went to an amateur wrestling match. Sean Spears like, okay, I'll give you the second. Uh, Sean Spears got the bottom position. Justin Law got on top. Actually grabbed him, rolled him over. Oh, almost got a two. He, well, he did get the two sweet count. And then that just made Sean Spears beat him up. Hit a running C4. That was good, though. It was, it was a different way to present jobbers. At least they're not getting a total squash. They got a little work in. Sean Spears obviously goes over, still looks strong as anything. Very air He looks like, like even more the arrogant heel now. That was a ham sandwich. And wow, I, I need a burst of sugar for, for, for this. Because I can drink soda now because lunch's over. All I've had is like booze. Soda and meat. It's, it's terrible. Uh, delicioso. Then we have our main event of the evening. Jake Hagar versus John Moxley. And this was set to go a lot more than 30 minutes. Because so I think the match literally started at the 920 mark with all the introductions. And Jared was on commentary. And Jared speaks the truth. If it's an empty arena, wait. Why, why are there barricades there? And what the heck is a folding chair doing there? No one else is supposed to be here. Well, well actually, there was the ring, the ring person, the ring bell person, and the announcer there, though. Um. So yeah, I guess having the folding chair does make sense. They need that, but why the barricade? Because they already have barricades. It was at, it was at the Daily Center. I should have snuck in. I could have snuck in. They would have kicked me out, arrested me, and beaten me and tased me, but I could have snuck in. Uh, JR, for the most part, sounds bored. This is a long match. It feels like a very dullish MMA match. You know one of those matches where nothing really happens, where you have two wrestlers in an MMA match? It's not necessarily the quickest thing, because they're not, because with wrestlers, they're not really good at punching. They're not, well, sometimes they're okay at striking, but that's not their thing. They want to get to the ground and then submit someone. Just like uh, with jujitsu people, if you ever see like jujitsu, like world class jujitsu matches, they take forever. And like most of the time, you, you don't think anything's going on. I know there's a lot more going on, but it just feels like one of those bad MME fights. It's like they're not even, they're barely even swinging at each other. Moxie does have, he busts out some submission. He does a Fujiwara armbar. 
Juju Gutami tries for Kimura. Does, I think at one point, a knee bar or figure four. That's pretty good. Uh, 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 every so often they go to the switch to the Yebus. Jake would throw knees. Moxley would do chops. Uh, uh, this just seemed longer than it should have. And for all the hype they gave this match, JR just seemed to be droning through it like, oh, why is there chairs at the ring? And why did we have a barricade there? No, oh, now the action goes into the bar It's just... It wasn't exciting. And people are saying, oh, this is going to be the best empty arena match ever. No, it's not. Mankind and The Rock is still the best empty arena match their boiler room brawl for the super time halftime show. Oh, I forget, but way back when, but well, now it's way back when. That was the best empty, empty match arena. It looked like something that you'd actually see in an empty arena. It's like it's, an, it's a sanctioned match, but it's a false count anywhere. Do whatever you want. If it was me, I'd show up there a garbage can with a keyboard, cheese grater. Uh, barb wire, barb wire wrap baseball bat, a two by four with nails sticking out of it, a reciprocating saw, and a weed whacker. Especially if I'm just going against some MMA guy. No, this is a no DQ match. Yeah, guess what? I'm bringing everything short of a gun and a hunting knife because that would be really obvious. I'd also have a fork in my trunks. I don't know how I would fit that there, but it would be the it would be next to the brass knuckles though. Uh, and I don't know. It's just I mean, again, why do you need a security rail? And it is the Daily Center of Jacksonville again. I should have snuck in there. It was really slow and plodding. Then they finally got to the chairs, and that's all they used. And I even mentioned them like this. This is uh it's supposed to be like their hardcore match. They use like chairs, a barricade. It's a no DQ, false count anywhere, street fight type match, empty arena brawl. There were no thumbtacks, no barbed wire. Heck, they didn't even have any bags of gummy bears. And to those of you that have seen the Candice Array and Joey Ryan taking on the Young Bucks, you know exactly what I mean. So they didn't have any of the f the fun stuff, I guess. And, like, the there was no blood. I'm like, dude, I'm going to take this baseball bat to your head, J Jake Hagar. No, you're not putting me in the ankle lock. That's not happening. Put me in the ankle lock, and we grab this freaking barbed wire baseball bat and whack you in the, whack you in the leg with it till you, till you let go or something. I'll figure out something to do. Heck, I'd even juice. We'll, we'll, we'll nick right there. So, oh, all right, I'm a bloody mess. But then uh, Moxie did some counters. Eventually, he hit the Paradigm DDT on a chair. That's it for all, all this hype. Boom. This match, no, WWE's actually put on better empty arena matches. I hate to say it, John Moxley. Your match was a can of soup. And that was AEW. So again, tomorrow I might make a special video. It depends on the weather, if I can get fishing or not. I do have a lot to do. I'll, I'll get fishing. I don't care how late it is because the sun's still up forever. Um, put up a special video about 10 things to do while at stay-at-home order is in effect. Friday is SmackDown, SmackDown Recap. That'll be done quick. It's also going to be the return of the Red Wine Pizza SmackDown. So I'm going to use that thumbnail again. Ooh, I'm so giddy. I'm happy. I'm doing the shoulder shrug of joy. Uh, Saturday, Sunday off, because I don't have to do anything, although I do have to make Sexy Star for the Daytona Beach Bun Fight League. I have no idea how, it, how I would entice one known luchador to come to Daytona Beach so she could take part in the Cinco de Mania Fest. 
which is actually going to be in about two weeks. Wow. Time flies when, when you're bored, I guess. And that's all, folks. Again, if you would like to have your own little video dedication, you can do one of a couple things. You can find me on the WooTube Discord group. I am, of course, Hobo Tom. You can leave a comment. And also, there was a, one subscriber. However, the new way YouTube has it set up, I can't see who's subscribed. So if you subscribed in private, you know what? Because you subscribed in private, see, I'll, I'll, I'll make an exception here. Let's see here. Since you subscribed in private, let's see here. You, sir, are a luchador on a forklift, mystery subscriber. So just like the mystery subscriber,